Well, praise the Lord. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the afternoon. Praise him in the evening and praise him at night. All those kind of praises that keep the devil away. Keep sin, sickness, and disease away. Just praise him in the firmament. Praise him in the heavens. Well, you said, well, how, how am I getting into heaven? Pray in that heavenly language. <laughs> That'll take you to heaven. Thank the Lord Jesus for a heavenly language. When you don't know what to say in English, you can pray in tongues. Well, we'd like to welcome you to our Wednesday Bible service, Bible studies. Whenever you minister the word of God and you need um, clarification, you always interpret the scriptures in light of other scriptures. Don't let your reasoning fill in the blank. You go ahead on and look at the word of God. We've been ministering on the snares of the devil. And our foundational text for that facet of it is found in 2 Timothy. We know that we are to stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and not to be entangled in the yoke of bondage again. All right, 2 Timothy 2.24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patience, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God preadventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to bring forth the gospel of Jesus Christ, for the Holy Spirit to give us enlightenment and to give us understanding concerning your word. Lord, we do not want to be ensnared or entrapped by our enemy. We want to know his wiles, his devices, his deception. We thank the Holy Spirit for teaching us and making us know the, or his oppressions or distinguishing things concerning him. And Heavenly Father, the voice of a stranger we'll not listen to, but we'll know your voice. We'll hear your voice. And Heavenly Father, as we bring forth this message, we thank you and praise you for your goodness and your truth and for the understanding of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we've looked at this. The Lord doesn't want anyone to come in opposition to themselves. Now, the first thing you would ask yourself, how is it that a person can come in opposition? How can a person oppose himself? How can you, how can you actually... Come against yourself in reference to the things of God. I'll tell you how. The Holy Spirit can tell you something or can quicken you to something. And you turn, nah, nah, that's, that's not me. Can't be. Yet when you go back to pray, some of the same things come back up again. And what you do, you turn away from it. And so over here in... Uh, uh, Hebrews, Hebrews, the third chapter. How can I be in opposition to myself? Hebrews, the third chapter. Look at verse 7. That first word says, wherefore. So we're going to go all the way down to verse 12 because the, par the, uh, what are the parentheses, the parentheses start in verse 7. And it ends in verse 11. So we're going to go from, from Hebrews 3 and 7 to 12. So it says, Wherefore, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exalt one another daily, why it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. See, your heart get hardened. Verse 7, parenthesis, as the Holy Ghost said, today if you will hear his voice. So the Holy Spirit and the word of God is, all, is constantly talking to you. 
And because God said in his word that his children do not hear the voice of a stranger, but they hear his voice, I believe that. I hear the voice of the Lord. A, a voice of a stranger I don't listen to. He said that. If he said it, it is. I hear his voice. So when he tells you something and you kind of like, hmm, nah, uh-uh. Knowing all the time in your heart you know it's talking to you, but you don't want to face it. So now you're coming in opposition to yourself. And what happens by your heart and your heart, you're messing with your heart character. Now, you keep on doing that, you won't be able to hear. See, your hearing is determined by your character. The how you perceive or how you hear the word of God is determined by your character. Well, then if you can't hear, you become what? Blind. And you can't see. And so then the enemy now can pluck you. <laughs> so it says, as the Holy Ghost in verse 7 said, today if you will hear his voice, if you will to hear. Now, you don't have to hear. Harden not your heart, as in the provocation, as in the rebellion, in the day of temptation or the trials in the wilderness. When your fathers tested me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err, or they go astray in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. See, right, right now, and when you believe in the Lord, there is a believing that will cause you to enter into his rest because you are totally dependent on him for what his promise was or what his promise is. You appropriate the promise by faith. You confess it. You believe it. Get it in your heart. Believe it. Say it with your mouth. Then you rest. You rest in that. Okay, so if your heart becomes hardened, it is through the deceitfulness of sin. And what is sin? Anything that's not right. You're not hearing the voice of the Holy Ghost so that you can obey and do. Okay. So, in uh, 2 Timothy 2.25, in meekness, instructing or, correct, or correcting those that oppose themselves. If God preadventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Now, what is God's will? That men be what? Saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. So everything is designed to come against you to keep you. If it can't keep you from being saved, it's to keep you out of coming into the knowledge of the truth. So then... It says, verse 26, and that, they, and that they may recover themselves. Well, if you're going to recover yourself, you're going to have to come to your senses. You're going to have to wake up. So in, you're going to have to have a change of heart. So in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, to let you know what it's talking about, recovering yourself out of the snare of the devil, 1 Corinthians 15, thought about, Evil communications coming from you, from your reasonings. Instead of casting them down, you go ahead on and accept it. Be not deceived. Evil com communication, evil company, corrupts good manners. Recover yourself out of the snare of the devil. Awake to righteousness and sin not. Quit sinning. For some have not the knowledge of God. To the acknowledging of the truth. They do not know God. And he says, I speak this to your shame. Well, what it does, it corrupts you. It corrupts your habits. It corrupts your character. And so you're, you're back to being in what? Opposition to yourself. All right. Now, let's go ahead on into this third chapter. So the Lord doesn't want anybody to be in the snare of the devil. He tells you how you can get out. You cannot be in opposition to the servant of the Lord. You cannot be in opposition to the teaching. I wonder what's in 2 Corinthians 4 and 5. I'm going to check it out. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 4. You don't have to turn. 
Second Corinthians 4. Just my curiosity. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I just said you can't be in opposition to the servant of the Lord. For we preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ the Lord, and ourselves your servant for Jesus' sake. See, I, I am your servant. I, I am of, to serve you, not me. For Jesus' sake. You Jesus people. And like I told you, teachers are going to be judged more harshly than anybody for leading uh, God's people wrong. And then so even though I minister the word, you, you ought to go back there and check it. Study for yourself. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. That means his presence is here to heal them all. Amen. All right, so I find out what that was. Okay, that third chapter. This is where we left off Sunday. Now, it's not written in chapter and verses. It would leave off with, and they, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive at his, by him at his will. This know also. Know what? What should I know? I need to know what's going to follow up in verses 2 to 5. I need to know this. That in the last days, these are the days now. With all this stuff going on, when we go through, when we go through verse 2 to 5, it's going on now. And, and the rapture is just a little sliver away. Oh, Lord, a little sliver, Candace. <laughs> a little sliver of time. He says, in the last days, which we're in now, the time immediate preceding the rapture, he says, dangerous times shall come. But they're here. They, they're all over the world. They're just not here. For men shall be lovers of their own self. They have an affection for self. And we are told, no, flesh. Flesh is human nature that is apart from God. Most of the time we say, oh, the devil is, no, it ain't the devil. The three things. The three things that are designed to come against the, you, your salvation and coming into the knowledge of the truth, number one is Satan. Number two would be the flesh. And the three would be the world. Now, when it comes to Satan, he's our arch enemy. He's God's arch enemy. He's against the salvation. He's against the coming into the knowledge of the truth. Okay? He's the author and the originator of the curse, which is spiritual death, sickness and disease, pain, poverty and lack, mental anguish. Did I leave anything out? Spiritual death. I said that, huh? So he, he's over all this. Now, when it comes, that's the curse. Okay, when it comes to the flesh, this is human nature. This is your human nature. That is a part, a part from God. Your spirit say you got members in your body, okay? Your hands, your arms, your eyes. You got to discipline this. God ain't going to discipline this. You got to discipline by how? The spirit of God in you to make dead. Your deeds of your body. So then, with this human nature, you got you have uh, human powers. You have human ability, and you have human perspectives. P E R perspectives. All this 
all, all of this comes against God. <laughs> now, all that comes against God. Okay, when it comes to the world, what you got in the world? You got corruption? Through what? Through what? Lust. You got corruption through lust. Why do you think you've been given the exceeding great and precious promises? So we can become a partaker of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's through lust. Well, if you got corruption that's through lust, what you got? If you got lust, you got lust of the, uh, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Pride. God ain't in none of this. He, he's not in none of this. When Jesus Christ went on Calvary's cross, he took care of everything. He, 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 we actually was crucified with us. Our whole self was laid on Jesus Christ. Spirit, soul, and body. So we, we, won't, we won't have no excuse. We don't have no excuse. When you come into the reality that you were not meant for you, you was meant for God. <laughs> You was meant for God. All right. Y'all understand that, huh? Okay. Because this is what everything hinges on. When you give over to this, you become into opposition to your own self. Now, people who are unsaved, they live in this. Unsaved people live in this. So they, they, they already bound to hell unless they turn around and receive Jesus. The only sin that sends anybody to hell is what? Rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. All right. Verse 2. For men's, uh, uh, 2 Timothy 3 and 2. For men shall be lovers of their own self. Covetous. Covetous had to do with, it's an idolatry. It's, uh, it's uh, a fun, uh, your affection is set on money. I'll come back to that. Because I said some things on uh, Sunday. Then it goes to boasters. Those are people who boast on stuff. Or they, they, there's a, they're empty. They got to say what they have. It's not whether they have it or not, but they become pretenders. It's empty pretense. It's not real. You have people, I'll tell you, when, I, when we was going to school in elementary and for Thanksgiving, what did you have to eat? Now, why would the te teacher should, you know, everybody don't. So what did we have? We had turkey, ham, and this and that. And I think we might have had pork and beans. So what was that? When I said turkey, ham, that was a pretense. I didn't have that. But I was a child, and you asking the teacher and asking the children, and they talking about they had this and all that. And what I'm supposed to say, pork and beans? Is you crazy? I had the same thing they had, ham, turkey, pie. <laughs> so you have grown people that are Christians. Now, if I was to say that now, it's either you are calling things that be not as though they were or you just outright lying. See, okay. Uh, in studying this, <clears throat> in the covetous part, I find out that uh, God made provision for us to have food and clothing. There's no reason why nobody should go hungry. God made provision for us to have food and clothing to protect the body. From what? T listen to me. He fortified the outward man with food and clothing. For what reason? What's inside of you? Your spirit. That's why. He fortified our outward appearance. I mean, yeah, he, yeah, he, the clothes, he clothes us and he fed and he feeds us. It's protection for the body. <laughs> Just a little, yeah, listen, I, we got time. Let's sideline journey. Matthew, sixth chapter. <laughs> 625. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink, 
nor yet for your body. The food is uh, the protection for the body. It's not the life. Where's the life? Inside the body. Because the body, the life leave out the body, the body dead. Is not the life more than food and the body more than remnant? So he, he wants us to be content with what we have. And it's a, that consciousness that having food and clothing provided by God. I am, I am, I am fortified against outside circumstances. I am. The inside of me is fortified against that. Outside circumstances come. It can't injure my spirit. Nothing of outside circumstances can injure the inner life. Where, where, where are the issues of life? They're in you. Don't care what circumstance come, they can't mess up the inside if you protect the inside. For well, out of you are the issues of life. You got to keep it where it's supposed to be. I say, yeah. And then he said, uh, verse 31, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what we shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we clothe, be clothed? And then the last part of 32, For your heavenly Father know it, that you have need of all these things. So you're a man. Man, what am I going to eat today? You, you have stuff in there to eat. You just don't want to eat it, or you just don't want to cook it. All right. Let's go back over here to, uh, now where did that come from, Sister Lee? That came from uh, 2 Timothy, no, 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy 6. Look at verse 5. We're just taking a little side journey. Look what it said. Perverse disputants, 1 Timothy 6 and 5. Perverse or useless wrangling or whatever, arguing. Dispute of men of corrupt mind and destitute of the truth. Remember what we're talking about? Destitute of the truth. Coming into the knowledge of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness. What they tell you to do? Get, get away from around them people. Just keep you get away from Rhonda. Anybody that's destitute of the truth, supporting that uh, uh, money, uh, what you have is godliness, it's not. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and remnant, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptations and a snare from the devil and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil which while some covet after, they have erred from the face and pierced themselves through with many sorrows or consuming grief. Now, I, I did some research on this. And I wanted to know why, but they that will, will. So the will here is a desire that comes from the reasoning faculties. See, God trying to get you out of your head and your flesh. He wants you to be led by the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit of God. Those that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. So it's our job to yield to the working of the Holy Spirit. So then he says, uh, but they that will be rich. Will, a desire that comes from reasoning faculties. The desire to be wealthy is the result of a process of reasoning. You ain't believing. You done figured out how you can get wealth. Mature consideration has been given the matter of the acquisition of riches with the result that the desire has become a settled and planned procedure. That's, that's, that's why you're setting yourself up for trials and a snare of the devil. 
It is not the process of riches. The, it's not the possession of riches, but the love of them that leads men into temptation. Everybody comes under temptation and snares whose ambition is to have more money than they than that which satisfies their accustomed needs. If you okay, everybody here got different needs. If you are trying to get, you got money to meet the need, and you're trying to get more money so you can have more things, it's called avarice. It's called greed. God done provide. <laughs> I said, Lord. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and he'll do what? He'll add it to you. He don't, want, he don't want you falling under this stuff. What is condemned is having a single eye to the accumulation of money by any means. Man, I, I need that money. I might have to sell some dope. I might have to sell, do this or that. Now, he, he's not coming against you excelling in some lawful department of human activity. Therefore, you can have an increase in, in wealth. You can increase. You're working. You're believing. You're tired of us. You can increase. And guess what? You develop your character. On your job, you get your paycheck every two weeks, every week, or whatever. In doing that, guess what? And in God involved, you are developing your character. So this is why he's, uh, he's against this. That's the reason why you'll small fall into temptation and a snare. All right. Now let's go back over here to 2 Timothy. Okay. Lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud. <laughs> Speaks of one who shows himself to be above other people. Or oh, somebody likes to shine or look good. Uh, I think we're supposed to be operating in humility. We know what disobedient to parents is. Lord have mercy. Well, I feel like uh, I don't know. I can't say that. I, I, didn't, have, I didn't have disobedient children. Because <laughs> when they was disobeyed, they got the tails worked. And the reason why, like JoJo said, yeah. <laughs> uh, unthankful, unholy. Without natural affection. What's, what, what's without natural affection? Well, we forgot blasphemers. Blasphemers are evil speaking, slanderous, reproachful, reviling, railing, abusive. Without natural affection. You know where you, you have the love of the parents for the children and the children love the parents and the husband loves the wife and the wife love. This is kind of a bond that's natural. Well, they don't have that no more. It's without that. The, the parents are against the children and the children against the parents, and it's just chaotic. Now, he's telling, he, he telling us this is taking place, and it is taking place. Truth breakers, truth breakers, irreconcilable, false accusers, slanderers, incontinent. Incontinent, that means without self-control. You ain't got no power over your own self without self-control. Fierce, not civilized, savage. Despisers of those that are good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, people that hate. Well, good being such things as that are true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, of a good report. They got people that hate this. They don't, they don't like that. Oh, she thinks she's so good. Well, if she's of God, she is. <laughs> traitors. Uh, well, traitors, they're, they're, those are betrayers. Heady. Listen to this. Falling forward, headlong. It describes a person who is reckless, headstrong, in the pursuit of a bad end, under the influence of passions. They follow their impulse. Well, let's see. I know what I do today. I'll go to the mall and I'll... Spend me some money or whatever. It's impulsive. Don't, don't ever think about nothing else. Just, just whims, whims. I used to be like that. Whatever, whatever. However the wind blew, I just blew right along with it. Thank God for deliverance. Okay, trader, heady, high-minded, high-minded. To make proud, puffed up with pride, rendered 
insolent, speaks of a person who in the past has come to a state of such pride and is so puffed up that his mind as a permanent result is be clouded and be sorted with pride. And then you got lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. That's the reason why you have to be careful about football games and all other things. If you don't be careful, you won't think nothing of it, but you'll put it in the place of God. It's, it's loving something more than you do him, and you put it first. Now, verse 5, having a form of godliness, having a form, an outer form, a facade, a make-believe, but denying the power thereof. What do you mean denying the power? No reality of the power. They resist any kind of influence that would come from the, the gospel because the gospel of Christ is the power of God. So they, they, they will not let the gospel influence them. And guess what he said? What did he say? From such turn away. Didn't he tell us to turn away from uh, uh Perverse disputing of men of corrupt mind, destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from search withdraw thyself. So you, if you don't read the word, you don't, you, you just say, hey, how you doing? And go on about your business. All right. Now, verse 6. For of this sort, talking about these people in 2 through 5, are they which creep into houses, and lead captive silly women laden with sin, led away with divers lust, ever, er, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So the first thing I did, I went to the dictionary, and I looked up silly. Weak-minded, lacking good sense, stupid or foolish. That means apart from God. I don't, I don't care how you look at it. Then the synonyms are things that mean the same thing. Witless, senseless, dull-witted, or dim-witted. All right. Okay. Of this sort are they which creep into houses. So then creep. <laughs> that Greek word creep means to envelop oneself into something. So what now, if somebody go envelop themselves into something, what's the first thing you think about? A wolf in what? <laughs> come, to, come to Matthew's the seventh chapter. I was too tickled. Now, now we're we talking about in the last days. Look at verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. They uh, envelop their self in something, so they put on a, 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 a type of clothes. But inside, they're ravaging wolves. And see, only, only with you in the word and fellowshipping with the Father and being led by the Spirit. They said, by... Uh, Everybody here knows me. You've been around me forever. Okay. Why could some slick willy come in and lay out a good sermon and everything, and you just, just take him in and don't know nothing about it? Or people who come on TV, you too. They have all kind of people out there that's not preaching the truth. And you listening to it and listening to it, and then all of a sudden you say, man, yeah, that's what I think. That's how I feel. See them ears? What it's done is appeasing the inside of you, and you think you're putting your religious garb on, and you hearing this, not knowing them words. It's changing you. They, got, uh, they, they minister right along the line of truth, but they insert some uh, lies in there. They do. Just like getting a, a, a dog, a piece of meat, and putting a little poison inside of it, or a sleeping pill so, you know, he can go to sleep or kill him. Well, Sister Lee, where is that fine? Okay. That's fine in 2 Peter. 2 Peter. Look at verse 1. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. 
But there were false prophets also among the people. Now, a, a, now, if you look at the verse uh, uh, in front of that, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. You see 2 Peter 1 and 21? For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. But there were false prophets. False prophets are self-appointed people. Also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who secretly shall bring in damnable heresies. What, what do you mean? What, what are you talking about? Even denying the Lord that bought them. What do you mean? Denying the Lord that redeemed us? Denying the, the Lord Jesus Christ's substitutionary death? You go deny this? That means they ain't even saved. How you can get saved without believing what Jesus Christ did? But look what he says. Denying the Lord that bought or redeemed them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. See, what you listen to, what you say, you better take it into account because you, you bring on yourself swift, swift destruction. Now, verse 2, and many shall follow their pernicious ways. Well then, if they without the Lord, false prophets trying to bring people in, guess what? They bring you in, they, they operate in immorality. Immorality. Anything that without God is immorality, period. Licentiousness, covetousness, you name it, they operate in it. Self-appointed. And many shall follow to the end their pernicious ways, by reason of whom these many people go start talking against the way of truth. The way of truth shall be evil spoken of. What is the way of truth? The outworking of truth in the life of a believer. The way of truth is a road. It's a path. And you work out your salvation on that in your life, and it's concerning your behavior, conforming to the image and likeness of Christ. And they're not through. And through covetousness. Through, if it's through covetousness, you got to understand. I believe this. I believe that wherever you go, you, you carry your atmosphere with you. <laughs> you, you, done, you done been in the healing scriptures? You go out. Something tried to come. They, it can't. What's in your heart envelops you. You're in the covenant with God. Psalms 91, Psalms 103, his word. He sent his word and healed me and delivered me from all destruction. Your words create your atmosphere. So these people here speaking evil against the word of the, the way of truth, the atmosphere that comes around these false prophets is covetousness. They create their own environment. They operate out of covetousness. And through covetousness shall they with feign words. What do you mean? What kind of words that's not true? Feign, pretenders. Out of their greedy desire to have money. What they do, they make merchandise of you. They exploit you because this is what you want to hear. You'd be surprised at uh, preaching. No, you wouldn't. Preaching, preaching things. Well, you ain't got to do that. And people uh, give their diamond rings, their watches, uh, you know. Well, this is what they out for. People do not like the truth. The truth will tear your playhouse down if you let it. Then once it gets towed down, what we do? Huh? We build it back up. <laughs> and then you get tired of it being torn down. You ask the Lord, Lord, what, Lord is something? What is it? And he'll tell you. Okay, so I want you to see that. You have to understand. You got to know people that work with you. Know them that labor among you. Then it says, whose judgment now of a long time lingered not. It's not idle. Judgment has already been pronounced on them, and they are 
their damnation slumbered not. It's not sleep. It's not every, everything has its day. All right. Now let's get back to these silly women and we go. <laughs> yes, indeed. Silly women. Well, now we done find out 2 Timothy 3 and 6 of this sort. They go come out that bunch from 2 to 5. They creep into houses. And the reason why they can creep into houses, how do they creep in? By trickery, stealth, under false pretenses. These insinuate themselves into homes of people. And like I said, on TV, YouTube. Oh, oh let, me, let, me, let me see what he's, what he's talking about. Might be talking about something that you need deliverance from, but he agreeing with it. And you just say, oh, I, I believe the same thing. Well, what, no, what did the word say about this? What did the word say about what he said? What did the word say about what Susan Lee said? This is the reason why I will go from one scripture to another to give you light, to give you light on it. The Holy Spirit has the final say so. So he creep into these houses and lead captive. He bring them, they bring these people under control. They capture their minds. What, what the devil got? One road to the mind. These people here, they're under the devil's influence. And these women, so are they. Because it gives their character. Lead captive, silly women, but laden with sins. They're weighed down with sin. They're hardened. If you um, have a very sinful, well, very sinful past. If you have a sinful past, and if you don't know how to uh, receive by faith the cleansing of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he did put that away, you'll be sin conscious. Sin conscious people commit sin. Always conscious of sin. You, you get to, I used to be conscious of sin all the time. I was always conscious of wrongdoing. Wrong, you know, oh, you done done that wrong. Oh, you, this is wrong. It was like failure. Can't do nothing right. I was, that's sin conscious instead of righteous conscious. So what did I do? I got my Bible and under, underlined everything in Psalms that said, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. The, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Not to be sin conscious. That's like being devil conscious. No, you're supposed to be God-minded inside. God conscious. So then it, their character is what messed them up. Their character identified with those people in, in, in verses 2 to 5. Laden with sins and led away with divers lusts. Led away with the world, corruption through lust, the flesh. Led away with divers lusts. Now, what, what state did that put them in? Ever learning. Are these, they go to church? Don't never think these people don't go to church. Ever learning. Always reading and trying to be taught and learning, but never able Able. Why were they not able to come into the knowledge of the truth? They had too much uh, weight. Silly. Laden with sin, led away with divers' lust. Different kinds of lust. That's too much. They, they need, they, they're shackled. That's snares. That's wiles, devices, deception. And so they, they, they needed to be delivered. And that's where the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle to all men. Back to that again. That's always available. Always available. That they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Look at 4 and 3. 2 Timothy 4 and 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But what? After their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. And they shall turn away their ears from where? The truth. Coming against the knowledge of the truth. And shall be turned into fables. Or they go believe fictitious stuff. They go believe anything that's not a fact. Okay. Come to a second Thessalonians, the second chapter, 2 Thessalonians, 
Second chapter. Let me see, where is it? Second Thessalonians, second chapter. Look at, look at verse 10. What, 9 and 10. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. See, that's the reason why you, uh, Jesus Christ operates in wonders and signs and too. That's why you got the Holy Spirit in you so you can be able to distinguish who is who, who's working what. And with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Why? Because they receive not. See, they receive not. That means you got to receive this by faith. What? The love of the truth. Well, who is the truth? Jesus Christ, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So we want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ for who he is, his goodness, his mercy, and you always, in, in reading all of this, you're always going to see that uh, lust is involved. Uh, come back over here to uh, uh, Second Peter. We're going to close it out. <laughs> Second Peter, first chapter. Verse 2, it says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through what? The knowledge of God and Jesus Christ. You can't get away from the knowledge. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through what? Through the knowledge of him that has called us to uh, glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. You got the divine power in verse 3, the divine nature in verse 4, having escaped the corruption that's in this world through lust. All right? Look over here in uh, 2, chapter 2, where they spoke about the, they spoke against the way of truth. But look at verse 10. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness and despise governments, Authority, tearing down statues and things like that, coming against authority. Presumptuous are they, self-will. They are not afraid to speak evils of dignity. And one of the, one of the things the Bible says, you don't talk against your president, you're supposed to be praying for him. This is the most disrespectful generation. And that's the reason why I said, baby, the, the rapture is just right around the cone if you want to say it like that. And I would encourage you, you, you to get into this word. Make sure you spend time with the Father. I mean, the gospel is simple. It is not hard. You got to keep close watch on your personal life. The Christian life demands diligence in pursuing moral excellence, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brother kindness, and selfless love. So you got, you got to... Be your God over your own personal life, but you have the Holy Spirit to help you. Uh, uh, look at verse 12 of this same chapter. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of things they do not understand, and they shall perish where? In their own corruption. Yes, indeed. All right, look at verse 18. Is it 3 and 18? No, it's still 2 and 18. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh. See that? Look in, in 3 and 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers, walking after their own lust. You better not find being none of these categories. What is lust? Lust will work in the flesh, the lust of the flesh, your ideas as opposed to God, your ability, your perspective, your uh, uh, powers. No, you want to be dependent on the Lord Jesus Christ for everything. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you and praise you. 
Because, Lord, according to your promise, we look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein there will in righteousness. And Heavenly Father, as we go about our ways, Lord, we're going to discipline ourselves through the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to know what to make dead through the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to know what to say through the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to know what to think through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, we would just ask that we would get to know you more and more. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord.